Good morning, it's Barbara. Thank you for joining me for coffee on this beautiful day. Another partly cloudy day, pretty lovely. It'll be a nice walk even if it's windy. Good morning, it's Barbara. Thank you for joining me for coffee. Oh, on this beautiful Tuesday morning, my second cup, I confess. Before I do anything else, I want to thank Alice for the beautiful birthday card. Soxy Nana. Isn't that pretty? And I'm sitting here looking at thinking, hmm. Hmm. I may try to do that with my painting. I am. So thank you, Alice, so much. It was sweet. I am disappointed because my watercolor crayons were supposed to come yesterday. And... When I went to look, because they didn't come, I said, oh, they ha couldn't access the premises or some weird thing like that at 4.05, which makes me think that he had too many packages on Monday and he what, didn't get to us, and so he's coming tomorrow, which is today. So I'm hoping he's coming today. I'm hoping my packages come today. I had two. Or a... Uh, generously gave me money for my birthday and uh, I went on eBay and found myself a Moreno glass cocktail glass with an elephant on it and I think it might be coming to um, have my cocktail in a beautiful glass so I will show you that when it comes because it'll be one of my birthday presents but yeah so Thank you. And I am going to copy this. <laughs> I'm not proud. I'll copy. I'll copy. So, oh, interesting news story. Sad, but interesting news story over the weekend. Remember on Wednesday when I talked to you about my birthday trip with Christy, we went to the Mutra Museum. And in their lobby, they had a, an iron lung. And the, you know, display information about the iron lung talked about how they had wards and wards and wards of iron lungs in the 50s when, the, when polio was rampant. And, um, and that as of 2020, there were still two people in the United States in an iron lung. And my water's ready, so I'm going to go make Dennis's tea and then tell you the story. So, I saw a news article this weekend that a man named Paul Anderson died. He was 78 years old, and he ha was in an iron lung. So, presumably, he was one of these two people. He contracted polio when he was six and had been in an iron lung for 72 years. I cannot even fathom such a thing. He went into that iron lung in 1952, before I was born. Anyway, so apparently there is a documentary about his life. I'm not sure when it was done, but um, I don't think it's been too long since it was done. Anyway, he died of COVID over the weekend. 72 years in an iron lung. Mind blown. I mean, I just can't even wrap my head around that. But I thought the timing was interesting since I had just been talking about him. I didn't know I was talking about him, but I had just been talking about him. So, last night, so I read a book yesterday, which I enjoyed very much, but I started early-ish, so I finished earlier than usual. Normally, I start too late, and then I finish right before bed, which is not good for my sleeping. But um, I told you yesterday that Dennis had ordered a new uh, remote control for my Roku because I couldn't get my Roku to work and I had forgotten about about it and it was like it's been several months so I haven't watched BritBox 
or Peacock Network because that's those two things I access through only through my Roku. So Dennis reminded me that I have voice activation on my Roku clicker. Now I have never used voice app activation on anything. My TV is old. <laughs> you know, my TiVo doesn't have voice activation. Um, but my dad uses it all the time on his, and he got a new TV when he moved in where they're living. And so it's four years old now. And he, um, talks to his clicker all the time. Well, anyway, so I tried it. My problem was, I mean, I knew power was getting to it because it would turn, it'd still turn on and off the television, but I couldn't get it to go to home so that I could pick what I wanted to watch. So I talked to it and said home, and home came up. So I'm going to have an extra clicker for the Roku because once I got to home, I guess it's the home button that doesn't work because once I got to home, I was able to maneuver around the screen with, my, you know, the buttons. So anyway, I was able to get on my Roku last night and I watched As Yet Unnamed, which is a comedy show that I like. I stopped in the middle of the third one. I, I didn't find them quite as funny, but Alan Davies, who is a British comedian who played Jonathan Creek on the Jonathan Creek series, um, and he's been in many other things. Uh, sits down as the host and just talks to four comedians um, from, well, from around the English speaking world. They've had Australians, Irish, Americans, um, and British, Scottish. Most of whom I don't recognize, uh, but some of whom I do. The, the first uh, inspector for Death in Paradise, Ben Miller, he was on. And um, Neil, no, Neil, Noel, I forget his last name, who's one of the hosts on the British Baking Show, was on. And another guy I had never seen, oops, that's the tea. Another guy I had never seen um, before, later I found, is like the lead in the show, like Dirk Gently. It's a, uh, a kind of a detective show, you know. Com comedic detective show by the guy who wrote and the character is dis uh, by the guy who wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe Galaxy it'll come to me you know you know who I'm talking about but anyway so so you know I'm sure these a uh, comedians are famous in Britain for the most part um, anyway, I enjoy that show. It's very, it's low key, but it's funny. And I sat there and I knit. So I watch TV, you know, I'm trying to, I, you know, I'm every once in a while having trouble sleeping. So I'm trying to do something calming and lovely right before I go to bed. So I got another inch, another inch. So if I do an inch, an inch a night, or giving myself a break, four inches a week. I wonder how long this will take me. <laughs> anyway, so I knit last night. So I did some knitting. This is my Corian, which is a poncho that's coming along very nicely. I'm loving this yarn. This is Knit by Numbers by John Arbin. Really lovely yarn. Um, yeah, so I sat and knit, and I discovered... I could get to my Roku, which was fun. I was talking to my clicker, which was fun. And it was already late. And then I discovered there's a new season, uh, three new episodes of Vera on my BritBox. I'm so excited, but I didn't want, I, well, tell a lie. I watched the very beginning, the very beginning of Vera's, you see the crime. And it's pretty much always a murder or a discovery of a body. The murder might have happened a long time ago. Um, 
So the very beginning is always the murder. And then the credits come. And then, of course, she shows up in the show and solves the murder. So I watched the murder. And the credits start. I'm like, I can't watch this. It's a, the shows are an hour and a half. It was already midnight. I'm like, I can't watch this now. So I'm going to have a lot of knitting to show you. And I need to remember to move my thing. I forgot to move my thing last time. Um, so who knows how much knitting I'll get done tomorrow night. Although I do, after about an hour and a half, two hours, I do get tired of knitting, which is not something that used to happen to me. So that's a little weird, but I don't want to overdo my arm anyway, so that's okay. Anyway, I'm excited. I'm going to watch Vera tonight. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to talk to my clicker. The little things. I did not do anything with my pen, my um, paneer yesterday, so I didn't make my crackers, but I am planning to do that today because otherwise I'm going to have to freeze the paneer and then it, you know, and I'm going to need crackers very soon, so I just need to do it. Ooh, Dennis has went and rummaged around in the garage and got his, got his seed. Got his seed thing out. He's been getting seed packages. This is, this is how I boxed up my my painting stuff. He's getting his seed packages in the mail. Well, clearly, we will be getting ready for seeds. He is planting peppers. He got some Peely Peely peppers and Malagata pepper seeds. So he's planning on planting some hot, hot peppers for himself. <laughs> They're a little hot for me. So things are going here and uh, yeah, and I'm starting to think about what I want to do with my deck and my yard. I might get try to get Manny back out here and do some work to make the yard look good. I showed you that I took out, um, where I took out the cone flowers. I'm thinking I'm gonna try to plant some lavender there. I, I need to do some research. I don't know how, what lavender needs to grow nicely, but I would love to have a little lavender, lavender around that um, lamp post. You know, something tall around the lamp post, and then shorter things around. I'm hoping they didn't take out my Stelladora lilies. I had two kind of lovely Stelladora lilies that are actually quite old. When I think about it, you know, I have things that are really old. They haven't done great. <laughs> But they're really old. I mean, we've been here 23 years. Next month. I had a peony that was under a bush in the front yard for years. And we'd get one flower. I mean, it was under the bush. This is a plant that needs sunlight, right? So I had it transplanted to a place where I thought it was going to get enough sunlight in the spring even though it wasn't going to get sunlight the rest of the time, it did not thrive. And I think it just got trashed when the fence went up over there because it was right next to the fence and not obviously, I mean, that was a 25 year old plant that looked like a weed. Anyway, I'm planting more peonies. I love peonies. I'm going to plant them over by the deck. So I have some plans and get Manny in here to talk to him about what we can do. We have, we have an area between the driveways that's just weeds with, you know, long, big, bushy things, and we just ignore it. We mow just so far, and then it's just back to the wild, which I'm fine with. Well, apparently not, because what I want is for him to clear that out and put ivy in there, and in the fall to plant bulbs. I want a, I want um, daffodils and tulips for the spring. Although my little daffodils, I had a move. I, they were sitting next between me and Aura, and she loves those. She's so excited about those tiny little daffodils. But I had to move them because last night I realized I was starting to get, you know, something, and it was almost like the smell of 
rotting flowers, you know, when your flowers are at the end and you're trying to save them, but you can start to smell them. Well, I went over and sniffed both of my flower arrangements because I thought, okay, you know, because I've been pulling out like the dead roses and stuff, but they didn't smell. So I think it was the daffodils. So I moved the daffodils over to the table so she can see them across the room, but I, I don't think I can have them sitting next to me, which was too bad. We liked them there, but I moved them. We'll see how, how it goes. Anyway, so a bright sunny spring day, even though it's chilly, has me thinking about things like that, and obviously Dennis too. So we'll see. He's got he I think he ordered four different kinds of seeds and he has gotten three of them so far, so he's getting excited too. I don't know if you recall, we have two clay pots that had his lime trees in them for years and they you know, they'd bloom one of them would bloom, they never got limes. Anyway, they died from exposure because they were outside all winter. But anyway, he's planning on putting peppers in those pots. That's his his uh, plan. I told him, well, use them or lose them because I'll plant something in them if you don't. <laughs> anyway, I always have ambitions at this time of the year, especially this time of the year because I can't do anything. So it's really easy to be really ambitious when you know you don't actually aren't actually going to do anything. <laughs> I'm I specialize in that. I can remember like, you know, signing up for a course and then like, "Oh, I wish I had my books. I would be reading them right now," which of course is baloney. As soon as I got the books, did I read them? No. But right now is the time where I'm excited and, you know, but I can't do anything. <laughs> but plan, I can plan. Anyway, so that's it for me. That's it for me. Yeah. Doing good. Slept well. Beautiful day. Maybe my watercolor crayons will come today. I would be very happy if they did. If they don't, I will be watching Vera tonight and knitting and maybe I'll take care of my tracker stuff. I should. I need to. You know me though. Who knows? I might just throw the paneer in the freezer and call it a day. I could do that. Meanwhile, please take good care of yourselves. Please, please stay safe and stay sane.